This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bombers Conference of Seventh-day Adventist. I'm Adriel Hepler. Coming up in this week's broadcast, Church encouraged to trust God, nurses appreciated in the month of May, and study into the book of Revelation begins. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. Thanks for joining us for this week's Adventist News. Last week, members from throughout the South Thomas Conference were encouraged through an inspirational worship experience put on by its administrators via Zoom, YouTube, and on the local Adventist television cable channel ATV 658. A message of hope came from the president of the Atlantic Caribbean Union of Seventh day Adventists, Pastor Peter Kahn. We can sing his praises even now. And I submit to you three profound reasons why we can. Reason number one, because of who God is. Yes, we can sing the Lord's song in a strange land because of who God is. God is God. He is God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the God of us all, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He in spite of the physical distance of members within our congregation, they remain steadfast as they continue to worship weekly via various social media platforms. So based on what uh, pastors are saying, uh, many of our churches are enjoying the online platforms and the services are meeting the needs as best we can at this time. And we're seeing a lot of ingenuity, a lot of creativity, and a lot of uh, new ideas as a result of having to lean so heavily on the online platforms. So I believe that our churches are doing okay. But of course, we're all longing for the time when we can go back into our sanctuaries and fellowship together. The government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas recently instated drive-up services where members are being allowed to attend church services from the comfort of their vehicles. This is being done to gradually reinstate the normal service format. One of the things that excite me is the fact that we're beginning to see the phases that the government is taking to go back to normalcy of life as closely as we can. And so this weekend, um, I believe one or two of our churches may be having drive-up services. I know for sure that the Good News Church is having one. We're extremely excited about it, and we want to invite as many of you who may be watching this or listening to this to come and join us. Even though we worship in different ways, it is good to know that we all worship one God who is able to bring us through these trying times. Although thousands of medical workers around the world have died working on the front lines, fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, Many of these unsung heroes and heroines remain steadfast in their duty to provide care for the patients regardless of their illness. We spoke to Rebecca Johnson, a Seventh-day Adventist who is the president of the Nursing Association of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, about what is it that continues to drive nurses to remain committed in spite of the threat of death that so many professionals face. The thing that keeps us going is the commitment, commitment to, to, nurse, to nursing, the commitment to caring for others. And so, when you know that's what you are called to do, so you go there every day, you go to work every day. You're not sure what you're going to meet, but you, you, you put on your mask and you go to work because you're committed to caring for others. Another thing I think that helps nurses is the positive feedback from their colleagues. They can depend on each other. Um, everyone is saying, okay, we're going to go, we can do, we can get through this today. And work together because you know whenever there's positive vibes you could feel of that and the same could be said for negative vibes so i think because persons are positive they support each other we go on, we go on to work we're gonna we're gonna do this we're gonna care for the patient regardless of the results the nursing officer told of how she copes during the time of unprecedented strain on our medical staff and resources it is my love for my colleagues and also i feel a strong sense of responsibility to look out for the nurses across the Bahamas. So whenever there's a concern or a crisis, whether it's the hurricane or whether it's COVID-19, whatever is going on, 
I feel responsibility to ensure that the nurses are okay. So I reach out to them, try to have contact in the different islands. My main the thing that keeps me going is my faith and trust in God. I really depend on him on every aspect of my life, and especially as the president of the Nurses Association. So I trust God to guide me. I trust God to keep me. I trust God to give me wisdom to be a, a good leader, kind leader, a Christian leader, so that um, they know that they can depend on me for their for support and for guidance. As this weekend concludes the observance of Nurses Month, we would like to say thank you to our nurses here in the Bahamas, especially our Adventist nurses, the sacrifices they make every day on our behalf. May God continue to bless you all. The South Bahamas Conference Bible Lecture Series began last week, Sunday, May 28th, with guest speaker and Seventh-day Adventist theologian, Dr. John Paulian. The series hosted 400 plus persons who joined via the Zoom and YouTube platform. This marks the first of four lecture series that will be conducted by Dr. Paulian on the Book of Revelation and matters relating to end time. It says, the angel which I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by the one who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things which are in it, the earth and the things which are in it, the sea and the things which are in it. And he declared, time will be no more. Wow, that sounds exciting. When we think of time being no more, what do we think of? Sounds like the end of the world. Paul Ian showed the similarities between Daniel 12 and Revelation 10. And uh, so what is behind here is a text in Daniel chapter 12, just like the text we read before. But this time, it's in Daniel 12 and verse 7. Now compare the two texts with me. The angel I saw, standing on the sea and on the land, raised his right hand to heaven, swore by the one who lives forever and ever. Now take a look at Daniel 12, 7, right below there, and compare the two texts. The man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven, and I heard him swear by him who lives forever and ever. Now I've color-coded this slide so that you can compare. You have an angel standing on the sea in the land in Revelation 10. Also speaking on church history, Dr. Paulian explained how in 1844, the Seventh-day Adventist Church redefined itself, using Revelation chapter 10 as its motivating factor to become a worldwide movement, proclaiming the message of the end time. The very informative presentation was followed by a question and answer segment where the speaker answered interesting questions from the audience. You are invited to join the Bible series this Sunday, May 31st, when Dr. Paulian will continue the journey through the books of Revelation, speaking this week on the biggest story ever told, Revelation 12. Please stay tuned. You'll have your upcoming events after this short break. Welcome back to Adventist News. Coming up in the South Bahamas Conference, on Friday, May 29th and Saturday, May 30th, our youth will be a part of a virtual retreat called Ignite. The guest speaker for these meetings will be Dr. Seth Delorda. It will be an online weekend of music and worship, featuring local Adventists, recording and spoken word artists, free digital books and food vouchers will be available. 
you can get information on how to connect via Zoom to their church youth leader. As mentioned earlier, the South Farmers Conference Bible Series continues with Dr. John Pauley this Sunday, May 31st, 2020. This week's topic will be the biggest story ever told, Revelation 12. Please see the South Farmers Conference website for information on connected to both the Zoom and YouTube platform. For more information on these events and more, visit our conference website at southfarmersconference.org where you can view the news as well as the various programming and read the weekly logos. sometimes suffer from back or neck pain? Are your muscles fatigued or are your shoulders slouched when you stand or sit? If so, you may be suffering from poor posture. Poor posture occurs when the spine is placed in an abnormal position for long periods of time. This causes stress on joints, muscles and the spine. Most daily tasks contribute to poor posture such as lifting heavy bags or purses, using a computer with poorly placed monitor, either too high or too low, texting with your head hung low. Some symptoms resulting from poor posture may include headaches, rounded shoulders, body aches, and a head that leans forward or backward. The Better Health Channel suggests a few ways to improve and maintain good posture. 1. Try the rule of curve reversal. If you have been leaning forward over a desk, try stretching backward. 2. Exercise regularly to maintain muscle strength and tone. 3. When lifting heavy items, keep your back straight and lift with your thighs. And lastly, Make sure your mattress is supportive enough to keep your spine straight when lying on your side. This has been Patrick Wilson with your health tip courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, President of the Adventist Church in North America, Daniel R. Jackson, and his wife Donna have announced their intent to retire, effective July 1. With the postponement of the 2020 General Conference session, the North American Division, or NAD, administration has worked with General Conference leadership to establish a clear process for the election of the new NAD president in July 2020. The Jacksons have served at the NAD headquarters since his election in June 2010 at the General Conference session in Atlanta, Georgia. He was re-elected to the position in 2015. Prior to coming to the NAD, Jackson served for eight years as the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Canada. Jackson says serving has always been a privilege. The real privilege of all this has been meeting with our people from coast to coast throughout the North American division in Canada, the United States, Bermuda, Guam, and Micronesia. To meet with our people, the perk of the job is to see the wonderful mission focus that many, many of our members have. This division is about mission. With the exception of five years of service in the Southern Asia division, Jackson, a native Canadian, has lived and ministered entirely in the NAD. During his career, Jackson has served the church as a pastor, teacher, and administrator. Donna Jackson has served the NAD as ministerial spouse leader and field assistant in the NAD Ministerial Association. Previously, she held the position of Family and Women's Ministries Director of the Ontario Conference of Seventh-day Adventists and the Women's Ministries Liaison Coordinator for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Canada for eight years. In compliance with General Conference bylaws and working policy, NAD administration has worked with the General Conference leadership to establish a clear process for the election of the new NAD president. All World Division executive officers served as elected elective officers of the General Conference, and their nomination and election by the region they represent must be approved by the General Conference Executive Committee. 
The NAD nominating committee will meet on July 6 to select a name to be presented and voted on by the NAD executive committee on July 7 and sent as a recommendation to the General Conference Executive Committee. Both of these committees will be chaired by President of the Global Adventist Church, Ted N.C. Wilson. The meetings will be held virtually via Zoom and a previously used electronic voting process will be utilized. On July 9, the General Conference Executive Committee will meet virtually to receive the recommendation and elect the new NAD president. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, the humanitarian arm of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, will provide food and medical supplies worth $2.4 million U.S. dollars to the North American Division's Adventist Community Services to expand relief to families and essential workers in the U.S. who are impacted and responding to the COVID-19 crisis. President of ADRA International, Michael Kruger, says, keeping families healthy and healthcare workers safe has never been more critical than now. This is why ADRA is proud to partner with the Adventist Church in the U.S. and ACS to ensure that we serve children, families, and essential workers during this health crisis. The assistance will be used in two main ways. First, for food pantries. Thousands of families across the U.S. will receive food parcels at designated Adventist Church food pantries. ADRA has committed $150,000 U.S. dollars to be allocated by ACS to regions within the North America. Most of the money, however, will be given for medical supplies. Medical supplies and personal protective equipment, or PPEs, worth $2.3 million U.S. dollars, will be distributed by ACS throughout North America. ADRA has been responding globally in over 70 countries, including the U.S., to help more than 2.7 million families and communities heavily impacted by the novel coronavirus health crisis. ADRA's response teams are providing a range of humanitarian assistance that varies from country to country. This includes the distribution of hand sanitizers, food kits, cash vouchers, face masks, and hygiene training. Since the COVID-19 pandemic has created unprecedented needs around the world, more than 38 million people have been left unemployed in the U.S. alone, and many food banks in the nation are seeing a rise in food shortages. ADRA continues to be on the front line providing continuous relief aid to countries worldwide. To help with ADRA's ongoing emergency response in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, visit adra.org slash COVID response. That brings us to the end of our day this week in South Thomas Talk with Seminary Edit. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events. Feel free to email them to fbcadventistnews.gmail.com. The view will rebroadcast the Adventist News along with other programs or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference, please visit and subscribe to the conference website, southalmasconference.org, our YouTube channel, and our Facebook and Instagram pages. On behalf of our production team of Adventist Television Channel 68, have a happy Sabbath. Thank you for watching this week's broadcast. I'm Adrian Hepburn for the FBC Media Network.